Right. Do y'all want to know how to live? Yes. Come on, bro. Because what we do is it really living, you know? Are we living right? Are we living wrong? But we need to know how to live. And we know that the Bible gives us basic instructions before we learn, right? Yeah. So we're going to really dive into the Word. I know if you came to hear the, the usual classic traditional, Jesus was crucified, he rose on the third day, let's go home. I'm sorry. You might want to go to another church down the street or somewhere because we keep things nice and fresh and engaging. So today we will not have a uh, a set it off because we gotta get things moving. We got a special presentation for everyone involved. Okay. So today's word does come from Romans the eighth chapter verses ten through thirteen. It comes from the NIV today. All right. So uh, we will be of course discussing the resurrection. But not the usual, the usual fashion, all right? So here's what the word of God says. Right? But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. So, a lot of you do not realize that you are actually at a funeral today. You're at a funeral. In a few moments, the body will be laid to rest. Hmm. Alright? So, we are here to discuss God's Word. So, let's look at verse 10. We're going to go precept by precept. Because we actually have a chance that it's a second chance. Anybody ever play a video game before? Mm -hmm. Alright, no camera does. I know I did growing up. You ever start losing that game? What could you do? Press the reset button. Alright, alright, alright. I've been working all week to get to this point in the game. I'm not about to die. So I'm gonna just press the reset button and go back to where I can play it again. So essentially as Christians, we have a chance to reset our lives. Because once we screw things up in these earthly bodies, we get a second chance if we believe in Jesus Christ to go and do it right ahead. Okay? That's the bit of good news because it says even though our earthly bodies we have we are subject to death because of sin. We get sore throats, we get colds, we get bad knees, we get all kind of stuff. We are subject to death. Everybody here we will have to experience death at least once. Okay? It's gonna happen to everybody. But the thing about it, are we really, you know, are we gonna be prepared to live forever? Because when I was reading it, I was, no, it says that the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. But the question is, are we really living now? Are we living or are we struggling? Right, because I think everybody knows that uh, the struggle is real, correct? You know, we struggle to be happy. We struggle to be content. We struggle to find joy. We struggle to find peace. We, we time to get some money. Somebody wants some money. We struggle to get the things we desire. We struggle to even sleep at night. We struggle to have peace. We struggle to have good health. We struggle. It's just really living. Right? So we kind of make it through this because our life is nothing more than a miss, right? So we get a second chance to really live in heaven. But the key to it, it says, because of righteousness. The Spirit gives life because of righteousness. This righteousness leads to abundance because Christ can't give us life and life more abundant, right? Not to say he came to give us not just a car but a big fancy car, but he came to give us everlasting life in heaven. But the key to it is righteousness. This is righteousness, right? Because I always like to just seek God, right? We like to say, I'm just going to seek God, seek God, seek God first. But then the scripture also says, seek God in his righteousness. So to be very clear and very careful to make sure we're doing the whole thing so we can have a second chance. But we also have to realize as Christians that we serve a very, very awesome spirit. You know, like, wow, that was some good cake. That was some, but this is the key here, that the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Just think about that for a second. What does that mean? The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Have you ever thought about that? Yes. Yes. That's the time you, your throat been acting up for about three weeks, or that time you knee, or you had a sickness, or the, the, when you had a stress, when you have a situation, the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is living in you. So, what's going on with our lives? Hmm. Oh, that's good. 
the question is, I mean, it really, we are more powerful than we think. Yeah. If the Spirit of God is living in us, we can speak things of our life because as, as we made an image of God, God said, God spoke, and then there it was. We can do all kinds of things while we're really acknowledging the fact that God is with us. But we have to realize that God is still able. Mm -hmm. Right? But there are a lot of things in our lives that try to tell us that He is not able, and this causes a lot of doubt. When we look around and see, well, it didn't happen last time, or it didn't happen with my sister or my brother or whatever, then God is not able. And then we get a little voice in our head, right? Doubt started to tell us that God is not able to do it. But the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the grave, the same reason we're here, the same reason this is not just any other Sunday. Yes. The same reason that we are Christians, the fact that we believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. If not, our religion is just like any other religion. But that is a quintessential difference in Christianity and every religion that our Savior is the risen Messiah and what it's prophesied about. And that he rose and we will rise again and we have his spirit. We can do amazing things. And, but here's the obligation. Here's the obligation as we get down to the good part here. It says, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. A lot of us have a really hard time living according to the flesh. <clears throat> the flesh says, ooh, that looks really good. Ooh, she looks really good. He looks really good. Ooh, that looks tasty. Ooh, that's going to feel really nice. We like to live according to the flesh, but to live according to the spirit. Because it's an obligation. An obligation is a debt of gratitude for a service or favor. Who are we indebted to? Jesus Christ. <clears throat> right. Because we all know about the crucifixion, right? We know about the nails, the nine-inch nails, all that good stuff. What he endured. But do we know about the scourging? The scourging, the scourging, you know. What this is right here, this is a canine tail. We talked about this yesterday, right? Uh -huh. So a canine tail, what the Romans did, they, they would beat him. They didn't just want to, Pilate didn't want to just kill Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. He was just, he, he just wanted, he wanted to torture, he wanted to humiliate him because he really didn't think that Christ did anything worthy of death. But since the Jews were just crying out, crying out, hey, well, let me just embarrass him and put the crown of thorns on him and beat him. But he endured so much pain just from the fact that he was beat with these canine tails. Yeah. And the Romans were so vicious that they would put all kind of bones and metal, all kind of stuff at the end of these tails. Yeah. I read about his story last night. He wrote about the, the gruesome details of being beat with the canine tails. That at times the people would get beat 40 lashes. And then you can see their inner veins and their inner parts, their, their intestines and all kind of stuff. And from their back, their kidneys, because the, the, the flesh is just ripped mm. Make it plain. apart. Yes. You know, like you just sit down and you just scrape your arm against a nail. Can you imagine that pain? Oh, I got to run to the doctor. I got to get a tennis shot. Oh, oh, yeah. But to just have your flesh is ripped out. Mm. Not once. Oh. Not twice. Not thrice. Not four times. Not even ten times. Right? Because they'll get beat sometimes according to their punishment. But Jesus Christ is a trouble starter, and we'll beat him real good. They put the crown of thorns up, and he's presenting them to the people. Here's your king of the Jews. All right, let's let him go. Oh, they said crucify him. So we have an obligation because we were the ones who really deserve to be tied to their posts and beat, senseless. And we had a discussion yesterday. No, oh, 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 I can't relate to Jesus Christ. But the fact is, we do it to Him every day. Yeah. Every time we are not doing anything in the Spirit of God. Every time we lie. Every time we have a negative attitude. Every time we doubt. Every time we sin. We do anything against without faith. Every time we sin, we are we're right there whipping Jesus Christ. Right there, having His flesh just hit us back in the face. After we beat him. Like God, I know I promised you I wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't fool with that situation. I was done with that problem, but I just had to do it again. Here you go. And his blood just spatters, splatters in our face. A piece of his side just right there in our face. Just because we wanted to gratify the flesh. We wanted to live according to that. I just had to curse her out. She had it coming. I just couldn't forgive him that time. I had forgiven him already five other times. I had to hit him because he owed me that money. Mm. That cake looks so good. I know I'm glad. I paid $9 for these pancakes, but I'm going to eat these pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop up every bit of sir. <laughs> they, they present to, I'm gonna do what I gotta do because I just gotta please this flesh. I know all of them might have 85 years and I gotta do what I gotta do because it's not a guarantee. You know, I, I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm hoping when I die I make it to heaven. I hope that when I die I see the big bright light. I just, I'm just hoping, praying, and believing. But just in case I don't, I'm gonna live it up. <laughs> YOLO, right? You only live once. So we like to get his obligation to the flesh. But the thing about true worship makes sense. If I know good and well that Jesus Christ gave his life for me, if my brother took a bullet from me, I'm going to do it. Brother, what you need me to do? If he lived to see another day, hey, bro, I'm going to wash the truck, I'm going to wash the house, I'm going to pay your bills, what do you need? You saved my life, so I'm going to do whatever it is I can to do to please you. Jesus Christ, because of you, I can go and live in heaven with you forever. I don't have to worry about any more sore throats. I don't have to worry about any more medical bills. I don't have to worry about any, you know, any other situation. No stress, no problem, no car breaking down. All I have to do is just sit and bask in your glory. And the fact that you died for me, I can just, I can worship you. I can live according to the spirit for another 50 years. I can say no when you want me to say no. I can say yes you want me to say yes. I can get up and go when I don't feel like going. Just because of what you endure for me. I can do it. It only makes sense. So the question is to make it personal. Is do we serve God or do we serve ourselves? And, and we all serve ourselves at some point. But as we continue to grow, mature, and develop, we have to start saying no to self a whole lot more. Because true worship makes sense. We have a true debt to Jesus Christ. We have a true debt. Forget about Sally Mae and, and Wells Fargo and, 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 and Capital One. Forget about those people. You better worry about Jesus Christ. That is the debt that you really want to pay back. And it's just so simple just to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just on Sunday for an hour. Not just, you know, when you're around church folk and when you're having a good picnic. But when you're all alone, when you're having these thoughts, when, you, when you're in a situation, you're walking down the street, when you're in your car, when you know, you're in the store. Whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, you got to be true to God. Because here we are. We're going to get to the conclusion of the matter as we get ready to have our ceremony here in a second. The conclusion of the matter is, is that for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. My son, they like to jinx me. They like to jinx each other. Jinx is when you say the same thing you copycat. So if I say copycat, he'll say copycat. If I say Tweety, what's this? He's like, Tweety, what's this? And sometimes it kind of get annoying. Like, okay, you can stop jinxing me now. Yeah. But the truth of the matter, we need to jinx Jesus. Jesus Christ, he died, and then he rose again. I want to be just like Jesus. When I die, I want to rise again. But the only way I'm going to do that, it says here, I got to put to death the misdeeds of this body that I like to please. So, so not only when his flesh dies, I don't want my spirit to die as well. Because it's a spiritual death when you are away from God. When you go to hell, that is a, experience, a spiritual death. Because there's no way of coming back. No way of having any glimpse of light to see Jesus Christ or God. So I don't want to experience a spiritual death with the time I experience a physical death. So the only way not to experience a spiritual death is to go ahead and live according to the Spirit. Yeah. It's just that simple. So at this time, we're about to put to death, literally about to put to death the misdeeds of our body. Okay? We have a grave site in the back. Believe it or not, we want to thank Brother Tyne for helping out. And I'm going to take and give Brother Tyne a hand. And what we have here, <clears throat> as we get ready, Cameron, can you bring this this, this table? We've got a makeshift uh, little, little, can you pick that table for me? And we're really about to have a ceremony. So if you have a pen or something, grab a pen. Thank you. <clears throat> and thanks to Cameron and his new pair of shoes. Here's our casket, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We want to have an open casket. <clears throat> If it is sit up. Tears. It's all the casket. And you can't have a funeral without some flowers, right? We gotta remember, we gotta remember our um, our deceased right here. So as we come by, we're gonna pass out some little sheets of paper right there. And we're gonna think about the misdeeds of our body and we're gonna put them to death. 
Mm. We're gonna put under there. And you can't have a funeral without some nice funeral music, right? Mm. So with that said, we're gonna take the time to celebrate the death of our Miss D's. Mm. So you already know who Miss D's are. You already know that if you sit in this chair, like, ooh, why you gotta be calling that? So, you Miss D, you gonna come, you gonna come lay your Miss D's to rest. And then when we done with that, we gonna burn Miss D's in the back. We gonna have, then we gonna have a repack this afterwards. Whatever it is, do you wanna live again? You wanna be like Jesus Christ? You gotta do what the word says. You gotta put the misdeeds of the body in the ground forever. Because as soon as we put this up in the ground, I don't think anybody will come back and say, Brother, you might as well dig this back up out of the. Can't go dig it up out of the back.
same spirit that rose Jesus Christ. Yes, it's living in us. Yes. From the grave, it's living inside of you. Yes. 